Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to episode 1 of the NK Zagreb Command and Conquer save and my word am I excited about this. Um, this is the first game ever in Football Manager I've had to play with like created databases and activated leagues that you can't normally play in and I'm very excited. I've done all the test runs, they've all worked. There hasn't been a problem later on in the game. I've followed on two seasons just to see what happened and the Croatian League doesn't break. So that's okay. Uh, I have done my face in the game by the photo. So does that look like me up there? Does it? Does it? Let's now forget about that. Let's crack on into the game. So that's what I'm looking at. Wearing a little bit of a, you know, open shirt, jet, black, a blacket? No, a blazer or a jacket. I'm trying to put two words together. Some nice brown trousers so you can't see when I ship myself in the game. And some very fancy light white paley brown shoes it's a fashion icon it's a fashion icon so yeah there are, we're going to go and choose the team and that team is going to be nk zagreb as you can see this is their history i did allude to this in episode zero of the intro of the why the how the where and who and things like that as you can see they, they've sort of fell off a cliff in 2015-16 got relegated at back-to-back -back relegations which has now made them a semi-professional club in the third tier of Croatian football and it's going to be pretty tough to get out of it put it that way here's a little bit of the background semi-professional club they've got a national reputation nickname is Pienzik which means poets uh, in Croatian the the German loves the club although the fans don't love the German which is again touched upon in the intro go and watch it if you haven't watched it uh, the transfer policy there is none I don't know what that means uh, the finances are insecure we play at the Kranzavisija which again I touched on I touched on the fact we have really good training facilities we have no data analysis great youth facilities and we start the league with a one point deduction because of our financial irregularities so we'll go into this um this is set up from my juventus save so i want to get away from that we don't want to have any of this i am a wow well, i'm a sunday league footballer i can't argue on anything else um i'm going to give myself a uh, more coaching focus i think or should i stay bog standard We'll stay... No, I'll be more... Co oh, I don't know. What do they suggest? Continental B. And a semi-professional footballer, actually, is what they suggest. I think what we're going to go for is we're going to go for Sunday League footballer, because that's what I am. I, what is that the lowest? What's the lowest? National C? Let's just go none. We'll just go none. We're just going to say we've got no badges whatsoever. Um, and we're going to go for smack bang in the middle. My young knowledge is pretty poor. Player knowledge is pretty good in real life. Um, I know quite. I like to think I know quite a lot about football. Anyway, um, my determination is very good, but I can't reduce any others. Um, attacking, no, but I do like. I'm quite a tactical manager in real life, so I mean that is that's horrendous, isn't it? That is some horrendous stats I've just given myself there. But nevertheless, let's crack on and get into it. Um, don't show this message again. Let's just start playing. As you can see, so we are going straight from the off. And this is how vanilla this game is. I, I haven't even saved it. I haven't loaded it up. We are diving in straight from the beginning under the save called Zagreb. Um, I just need to press the save button. There we go. So as the game saves, leave a like if you're excited. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think is going to happen with this series, with the save. Do you think we're going to get it all the way? Obviously, the end game is Champions League glory with NK Zagreb. So let's go have a look. Our press officer is press officer is Anika Petrovic, which is nice. In a move being dubbed a massive surprise by many, the Zagreb board have named a virtually unknown English manager with no prior experience as their new boss. Coached left foot who turns 33 next birthday was introduced to fans and journalists alike at Kranjavitsia this morning and declared that he is ready for the challenge and was looking forward to earning their trust in the weeks and months ahead. He replaces previous manager Drazen Madjunovic who was not very good, but but better than me. Um, so, welcome to Zagreb. Uh, this is the Drazan Medic, the guy that the fans don't like and allegedly has mafia links. So let's see what happens there. We've got a contract for a season until on six hundred and seventy-five pound a week, which is very nice. The opponent's expectations are not finalised yet, but they will be sent a message when they are. We've got the full back in the board, director of football Igor Kalo, who. Will more than likely be replaced by um, Brett Higgins, actually, um, is currently in the role. Staff members, blah, blah, blah. In order to take the transition, the club's chairman, the ladies and medical club chairman, and your assistant manager, Goran Vicentovic, would like to hold a meeting regarding the club's history. I'll go and do all these meetings. We're going to come back and look at the players. 
Okay, so on to this. We have just skipped out the tactics induction at the moment. Obviously, I know what that is. I've been playing the game since the beta with Juventus. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, we've got quite a few players that have come into the club. Lots of free transfers. I can't imagine many of them be very good, but we shall see. So Antonio Pavlic comes in. He has joined from Ruda Labin, who is also in the third league west. So at least he'll know what this division is about. Uh, goalkeeper, not doesn't look brilliantly uses long throws to start counter-attacks okay um current ability is four star wow that doesn't bode well for the team really um we might have to go in and change the colors of the stars we've got we'll go through the whole team in a minute he's the only one that we've actually bought for an undisclosed fee so that's quite interesting none of no one else has even come from clubs so God knows what's going to happen there. We've got no injuries at the moment. On average, I'd expect to see around 44 injuries per season. So he'll keep us updated. Responsibilities. I'm going to be doing absolutely everything at the moment other than the youth team training, which I'll be leaving to someone else. I'm going to try and focus on the training and the contracts and everything like that like I would do. Maybe that will change when we get some of the Patreons in if they want to be the backroom staff. Like when Brett Higgins joins as the director of football, he'll be taking on some responsibilities for me. Pre-season preparation, we seem to have quite a lot of fixtures lined up, which is good. I think we're going to need them. Um, Pre-season fitness report, the following players reported back in top condition. So Pavlic has reported back in top condition, as has Josip Letica, another goalkeeper. Okay, so that's two goalkeepers we've got. The most recent Croatian transfers, uh, Lovro Maya from Locomotive to Dynamo, Emil Dilavare uh, to Dynamo, and Mario Gavranic to Dynamo. Excellent. Uh, so a background, we sort of touched on this already, they have won the Croatian first league division once and they've won the Croatian second league division once and they won a Yugoslav second division five times before obviously Yugoslavia was disbanded or broken up is probably the more political correct term to use um, or split, I don't know, let's not get into that. So founded in 1903 which is more, well, which is longer than what I originally thought it was in 1919, I thought. A semi-professional Croatian club currently playing in the 3rd League West. Zagreb begun the current season with a one-point deduction. Yet, we know we're playing. The passionate fans are known as Pjanjic. Um, a club which enjoyed its best spell of success during the 2000s. Their last competition win came as recently as 2014. Impressive. Um, they're a club with a growing history. Zagreb won the Croatia top division for the only time in 2002, finished runners-up twice, and runners-up in the Croatian Cup in 97. They won the Croatian second tier for their only time in 2014, and won the Yugoslav second tier on five occasions. As you can see, great youth facilities, really good training facilities, adequate junior coaching, and average youth recruitment. So we are set up to try and get some good youngsters through the team. Our team report as we go into it. Lots of green pretty a uh, fair amount of red so what have we got got team in general plays a high level of vision and creativity the goalkeepers in the team are generally capable handlers of the ball goalkeepers in the team are generally dominant goalkeepers in the team are generally command their area goalkeepers are good goalkeepers are good goalkeepers are good goalkeepers are good i'm getting the understanding that our goalkeepers are pretty good the team in general has a high level of positioning goalkeepers have good reflexes the goalkeepers in the team are good at coming off the line the goalkeepers wow we've got a good number of free kick takers anti kinesic is one of four good options in goal it's is our assistant, like, was he a goalkeeper? Does he love goalkeeper coaching? No, one one one. So, uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. He just thinks our goalkeepers are the bloody bee's knees. There's plenty of room in the wage budget with an additional £650 a week still available to be spent. There are a no number of talented young prospects, including Jokic, Zebic and Mihakovic at the club. Denny Bektasi represents star quality in central midfield. And we have star quality of an option in goal. This is good. It looks like we've got quite quite a good team, which is interesting because they really are struggling in real life. No players capable of playing at right back. No players capable of playing at left back. No players capable of playing at centre back. Ah, I'm starting to realise why well, they might be shipping in a lot of goals. There is a great, they're not a great deal of quality outside the first team. Anthony Regovic on the right wing is a decent option who can be improved. Christian Parmasevic is only a decent option on the left wing and that's a team we could really be improving on. We can't head. We can't mark. We can't have good ball movement. We can't have good ball movement. That's terrible English. We don't have good ball movement. This isn't the best squad in terms of tackling. Then very crap at decisions. The goalkeepers in the team are generally quite eccentric. Excellent. This isn't the best squad in terms of acceleration. Some players aren't the strongest. This isn't the best in terms of stamina. It's not the best in terms of pace. It's not the best in terms of balance. They haven't got good aggression. <laughs> there isn't good agility. 
There isn't any composure, and we've only got 18k left in the transfer budget. There isn't much room to manoeuvre on that front. I'm impressed we've got a transfer budget at all. Ah, right. Skip this. We'll go on to that later. A welcome from the director of football, Callo. We have no packages for scouting, although we could afford something, but... I just want to figure that out. We're not going to go into any gameplay in this first episode. We're just going to go through the team, look at the players, and go through everything like that. Something I would like to find out from you guys in the comments below is how do you want me to play this game? You can be very, very strict with this. You can say I'm not allowed to use the player search function. I'm only allowed to find players that my scouts suggest to me or my scouts produce a report for or my scouts show me in the inbox. I never press the scouting button. That is a very hardcore way of playing it and I'm intrigued to give that sort of thing a go. I tried it on the Maribor save and failed completely. I gave up after about, I think it was about six or seven months of uh, game time because I, we really needed to progress. Would you like me to play that hardcore sort of game mode and you say when we're not allowed to go out and just look at the transfer list or players that are transfer listed or scout or you know player search for viability or stats or things like that. Basically, we have to hire scouts, and then those scouts have to find us players. And the bring thing with that is, obviously, we then upgrade the scouts over time, unless they're a Patreon. If you're a Patreon and you want to be a scout, you will be at the club until someone else poaches you, or you retire. That goes with any Patreon who wants to be a backroom staff, you will stay at the club. Even when we're hopefully progressing through the leagues and progressing into Europe, you will stay at the club and hopefully not get poached by someone else. So if you want to be a patron, the description is the link is in the description below. Go press it. $1 a month. You can either be a regen in the game or a new generated player. In a position you prefer, you get to pick the player you want to be. Or you can be a member of staff that we bring in to the club. You're not allowed to replace anybody that's already here, but you will replace someone that comes in. So Brett Higgins has told me he wants to be a director of football or maybe he might have been a head of youth development. I think it was a director of football. He will be coming in as a new player or a new signing of staff, we'll bring him in and then he will get named into the game. So have a think. Let me know down below. Sign up to Patreon and let me know on Patreon as well. And everybody that's already signed up, thank you so much. But let's crack in to the game. I want to go and have a look at the squad because I have no, have no idea who these are. Okay. From this, just this view alone, I would suggest... We don't have that many players. I mean, this is pretty good. Who have we got that's knocking around in the under-19s? Okay, no, we've got quite a few people. Okay, let's just call, for the meantime, let's call... Oh, I can't call everyone up because you can't call up the grey players. So let's just call up... As you can see, quite a few amateur players who aren't on contracts who could get poached. So let's just move all these guys up to the senior squad to make it easier to view. Um, lots of people with an injury risk of high because they're just coming back from pre-season. So, not a great deal of depth, as we were told. We do have some right-backs, a lot of people on amateur contracts. First off, let's see who's rated the best in the club. Ante Kinzeevich, 30 years old, valued at 4, valued at 45.5k, £275 a week. He is on a two-year contract. Sweeper-keeper, looks pretty average, but rated very highly by our assistant manager. Okay, has he? He's, he's apparently never played for anyone before, so that's quite interesting. Um, he has one long term plan, definitely to try his hand at goalkeeper coaching when his playing days draws to a close. Six foot two, so he's nice and tall. Um, he's good leadership, actually, so he could be a potential captain. Uh, one on ones, he's good. Throwing's good. Rushing out is good. Eccentricity's one, even though they said we had quite a lot of eccentric goals. Aerial reach is very nice. Anticipation, acceleration, concentration, yeah. I mean, I haven't looked at the other goalkeepers. Likely to be our first choice goalkeeper. Next up then, Danny Bektassi. Holding midfielder, midfielder, attacking midfielder. His favourite of all of them is central midfield. Uh, first touch, 14. Passing, 11. Marking, 11. Tackling, 15. Positioning, 15. Okay, I like this guy. Decision, 15. This could be our absolute playmaker. Who uh, The play goes through. 150 grand a week, valued at £41,000. He's on a two-year contract as well. Seven pros and three cons. Um, he's a peripheral, peripheral figure in the squad. Low athleticism and no strength. However, good player for most second league side. So he's actually playing below the standard that our coach thinks he should be. Next player, Muo Tadic. Again, likes to play central midfield or attacking midfield, but can play pretty much all through the middle. 
Um, and Gonch is what his favourite role is, fancy man. Uh, good passing, good technique, good tackling, good vision, good work rate, good long shots, good first touch. Great natural fitness. He's looking like he'll be very good. £130 a week, 14.25k is his value. Only 18, so quite potentially quite a lot of places to go. New signing at the club. Eight pros, two cons. Has plenty of room to develop. Yep, he's only 18. Currently lacks the game intelligence required to compete at higher levels. Fits well into the core group of the squad. Natural in a couple of positions. Suited very well to third league West football. Has potential to be playing in the second league. So... Someone will have to keep an eye on for sure. Next up is actually an amateur goalkeeper. Is the third best player at the club. 18 years old. No value. No contact, obviously. Important player. Could still improve. Five pros. Zero cons. Very well suited to this football. Could play in the second league. Fits in well with the majority of the squad. Uh, looks like he was pretty decent. Yeah, could be a good backup goalkeeper. Six foot one again. So nice and tall and a good aerial reach. Midfield. Right, left, centre. Luka Vinsky. Can literally play all across the midfield. Prefers it as an inverted winger on the left, but can play all across pretty naturally, which is good. So, six foot, not too bad. Strength, six. Everyone's a little bit weak. They are, well, mainly young players by the looks of things. 22, so decent crossing and dribbling. Good passing, good technique. Someone worth keeping an eye on. Pretty decent pace as well. Could be used on a left sort of wing position. Next up, he is an amateur as well, so sometimes we'll have to maybe see if we can get these people onto contracts. Pavlic, another goalkeeper, looks pretty helpful. 19 years old, a backup, £100 a week, two-year contract. Looks like he could be pretty useful. Starts long throws with counter-attacks. Yeah, like the look of him, we'll have to keep an eye on him and see how he progresses. Another goalkeeper, Milos Jokic, is actually listed for loan. 18 years old, Serbian, so our first foreign player from not from Croatia that we've seen terrible technique but really tall terrible throwing um, all in all needs quite a lot of work we'll see if we can put get a loan move for him worth 3.4k no cons apparently but is easily the worst well, the, the weakest I shouldn't say the worst the weakest goalkeeper in the squad is very well suited to our football could be a second league goalkeeper in the future so it looks like we have got quite a few options in goal okay Next up, Christian Parmasevich, which is a very nice name because it sounds like Parmesan. Right winger, left, naturally a right winger, a left winger, and an attacking midfielder, which is interesting. So he can be an inverted winger or a winger, and he can be an inverted winger or a winger because he's either footed. Nice. Okay, so current ability isn't the best. He's apparently a backup player. Hot prospect, 17 years old, value 6.25k. Yeah, lots of stuff he could work on, but doesn't look too bad at all. So dribbling and crossing is decent. Acceleration and pace is okay. Um, probably lacking a little bit in the, the passing. Um, decisions and passing isn't too bad, actually. A bit of flair as well. So, I don't know, maybe he sees himself as a bit of a Lionel Messi sort of player, as so many young players seem to do nowadays. Um, that was, who was that? That was uh, Parmasevic, wasn't it? Antonio Regovic, attacking midfielder, right slash striker, a pressing forward, acceleration 10, pace 11, corners 5. I don't know why I was drawn to that stat. That's a horrendous stat. He can't tackle, but his teamwork and his work rate is absolutely incredible, hence why the pressing forward. Uh, what's his finishing? 12. So if we put a pressing forward on attack, let's just see his off the ball 8. That's terrible for a striker. Balance 7, agility 9. Finishing 12, first touch 13. Six foot though, and only 21. So again, looks like someone we could look to look to in the future. Right, now a bunch of amateurs. Josip Granic comes in. Striker, or a midfield, attacking midfield right, or an attacking field centre. The computer thinks are pressing forward on defend. Terrible work rate, terrible teamwork. Decent pace. Can't imagine he's going to be anywhere near the first team. Even the coach thinks surplus to requirements. What are his pros? What sort of level does it say he could be playing at? Decent player for most third league West sides. Potential to be a good third league West striker. So, uh, maybe. We'll see what happens with him. Leo Matijevic, centre-back. Now, we were told we had pretty poor centre-backs. Good tackling. Good positioning. Good jumping reach. Everything else is pretty shoddy. But... I don't know. I think he could do a job. I think he could do a job for us. We'll have to wait and see. He's only on an amateur contract. I think we're going to have to dip into the transfer market at centre-backs. It doesn't look like we've got many options. Strength is a bit poor for a centre-back. Well, you know, we'll wait. Maybe give him a chance in pre-season and see what happens. Sven Kurtovic. 
Defender, right, left, and a right wing back at the same time. Left footed though, so probably will be prefer that left back position. Um, a bit of an all rounder. Lots of ones. Dribbling one, finishing one, flare one, balance one. He's going to fall down a lot. He's just going to fall down. Ah, like that. Just fall down. Um, yeah, exciting young prospect. Way off the first team level. Interesting how they say he's a. So could improve a lot in the future. Doesn't say what sort of level he might play at. He's very one-footed. Lacks the strength and fitness. He should be in the gym working on his overall athleticism. I like that. That's a nice little touch. Uh, apparently the second best left back or the same rated left back as our, another player that can play that I'm sure we'll get on to in a minute. Uh, Lovro Silic. So we've already got a Lovro at the club. So Lovro, do I need to put you in the game? You are a Patreon. And he's a centre-back. Like you, like we had the Lovro that you were in the NK Maribor save was a centre-back. A very good one as well, actually. Decent pace, decent tackling. Not too bad. Marking's okay. Heading's pretty good. I quite like the look of this guy. Got some stats we could potentially work on. Do they say what sort of level? Potentially a third league, a potential to be a third league West Central defender. So not... This is his level, apparently, when he hits his full potential, which isn't the best, but we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, Sven Kurtovic, and Oh, no, we've looked at him. Carlo Zebic, a wing-back midfielder right. Hopes to learn a lot while he's at Zagreb. Prefers to be... That's interesting. His natural position is wing-back right, but he's actually suited to be a winger as a midfielder right. Good pace, good acceleration, good agility. Dribbling and crossing's okay. First touch is pretty decent. Off the balls, not very good. Marking's terrible. Fla How could he be a winger and have no flair? What are you going to do? Where are the step-overs and the tricks and the flicks and all of that? No flair. Uh, composure three, that's pretty terrible. Anticipation four, five. Corners four. I'm starting to think set pieces could be a bit of a problem while we're looking through the team. Um, Luca Tramultana, which is a very good name. Uh, Luca, I like the surname. Uh, left midfielder, left winger. Looks pretty good. 17 years old. Some decent stats, some something to work with. So good crossing, good dribbling, good acceleration, good pace. Decent flair, work rate could be better. Techniques are right. Passing is. T Look at this. Free kicks, three. Heading, two. Long shots, one. Long throw, two. Marking, one. Passing, two. Penalty taking, one. Tackling, three. Teamwork, four. Positioning, one. Off the ball, three. Decisions, five. Concentration, one. Like, that. I think my puppy has more concentration than Luca Tramatona. Composure, two. Bravery, four. Anticipation, two. Balance, one. Stamina, four. Strength, two. He's just not going to be. He's not going to make it, is he? I mean, determination, seven isn't too bad, but... Okay, we'll see what happens with him. Carlo Mihakovic. Miho, Mihakovic, I think that is. Attacking midfield, left, striker, Turk can play both naturally, but the computer thinks he's more suited to a winger. Good acceleration, good pace, good agility, nice. Decent crossing, decent dribbling. Again, work rate, terrible passing, terrible. These Some of these technical and mental stats are going to kill these players. Two pound a week he's on as a 16-year-old, so... <laughs> Fair play to him. Let's give him a bit of pocket money. Mislav Mukilic will be his competition for a left wing spot by the looks of things. He won't be offering much competition, I don't think. 19 years old, valued at zero. Zero pounds a week. Seven pros. Uh, fits in well to the core group. Potentially a third league west left winger, so not brilliantly. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have to get some scouts in. This is why it's such an important question to let me know how you want to play this game. Because we're either need to get scouts in and play hardcore and get them scouting immediately. Or I can just go and look at the player search list and go and get some new players in. Final, final player, not even rated in the gold star ratings, is Dario Josipovic at right back. Tackling and passing is pretty good. Crossing's okay. I don't think he's that bad. I think he could be okay. Good decisions, good concentration, decent positioning, decent teamwork. I mean, eights are pretty crap, but at this level, you never know, really, do you? A flare, one, that's fine. Just no nonsense. Just get it out. Decent pace, good natural fitness. It looks a bit average, but average is good, I think. Average is good for this team. So that is the whole squad that we have at NK Zagreb. If we put them into position, then, four goalkeepers... Uh, one, well, sort of two, three people that could play right back. One of them is has to going to play left back because we don't have another left back. Um, two people that could potentially play central defenders. So if we just go on ability and position, this would be our starting lineup. It would be we need to create a tactic. I'll be right back. Okay, we're actually in the tactic creator thingy, my Bob, and it's been a very long time 
since I've done lower league football. My immediate thing is to go route one. Quick transition, direct pass and get it forward. However, I think we've got some decent players that can control the ball in the middle of the pitch. So I don't really just want to avoid them. I don't really want to just cut them out. So I'm going to try and create my own style. Now, we sort of have to play a four at the back. And I think sensibly we start with a 4-4-2. We go from there and we edit it. This is what I'm thinking. We'll come on to all the team's instructions in a minute. What I wanted to do was just go through the ability-wise and pick the players that it says we should. So Bexathi it actually said would be awesome in central midfield. Um, Tadic, I think it said, yeah, central midfield as well. Already I can see there's going to be some changes to the formation. Vinsky was, I think, the left midfielder, if I remember rightly. Yes, left. But he is right-footed and can play equally as well on either wing. So we'll start him at right midfield. Uh, then we have other goalkeepers. Then we have Parmasevic, who at the moment will have to go in the left midfield spot. Then we have two strikers in Granic and Uragovic. Then we have, um, a, well, Lovlo, I think, well, Kurvat well, Kurtic will have to go left back because he's the only person that can play there. Then we've got centre back as Mateovic. And then it'll be Lovro at centre back. And then maybe Carlo at right back. Ability wise, this is what it says is our lineup to to start the the save. Like without signing any players, this is probably our best team we can put out. So what do we do here to make this better? Tadic, you are a nothing is a full green circle. So I think we play you in here. Let's just go with, it said a Carrillo. Do I want to do that? I don't think I do. I think just a central midfielder on support. You seem to be able to do that pretty well. You, Bektasi, are a central midfielder on the defence. So you fit in there quite nicely. Now, Rigovic is a pressing forward. We'll go for you on attack if you can play it. Because you will be a pressing forward on defence. That is a lot of high press from the front. And uh, Vinsky wants to be a winger. I mean, the only difference is that Zevic really sort of wants to play... No, I don't want to swap you two over. So you can't play a wing back. Hey? How do I get a wing back in this formation? You act, oh, you want to be a winger on support. Okay. This could mess things up. Um, but I think I need you to play there. I mean, let's put Josipovic in there because he's a natural fullback. I mean, surely he wants to be a fullback on defend. Kurtovic, fullback on defend. Silic, central defender, cover. Interesting. And Matijevic, central defender, on defend. And uh, Kizlenovic wants to be a sweeper keeper. So we'll start with that. So this is... It's an interesting lineup. It's... I don't know. Let's see. I'm interested to see how far away is our first friendly. We're going to be playing Medium Murdy. Luckily, we've got quite a lot of friendlies that I can play for, play through, and try and get it. It's actually in three days' time, I think. Or is it in a month and three days' time? Um... Squad dynamics. I know all about the squad dynamics, but we'll introduce myself to the club. Um, assertively, I just want to say, introduce, to introduce myself. Hello. Passionately. Welcome. I'm pleased to see you in charge and hope your reign is long and successful. Thank you, Anti Kiznevic. What I'm just going to go very, very bravely here on what do, <laughs> what do the media think we're going to do? Uh, overview. Season preview. Okay, they think we're going to finish 7th, so I might just say top half and see if they want to be more adventurous than a top half finish, then then bully them. That would be nice. Introduce yourself to the squad. Okay, passionately, top half finish. Yes, they love it. That's exactly the sort of reaction I was ever. Good. That is it. That's set. That's nice. Training induction. I'll come on to all the training in a minute. Talking of training, actually, backroom staff. So, for coaching staff, we have myself. We have assistant manager, Gordon Vicentich. Vicentic. Vicentich, I'm going to go with. Um, pretty good at actually judging players and man management and stuff. Terrible at coaching. So maybe we may look to upgrade him. Uh, coaching, we have Luka Milanovic, who is a fitness coach. Not too bad. Fitness 8. Again, good good sort of uh, mental stats here, which is good. Look to keep him involved. Um, and then we have a goalkeeping coach, Zelko Nezic. Uh, goalkeeping, very good goalkeeping coach for this level. 72 years old. Definitely going to keep him around the club if we can. His contract expires 
let's see if we can just get him in. Can we? Right, part time. That's the problem. I think we're going to have is a lot of people are going to want to be part time. Promotion wage rise. We'll give you fifteen percent. Um, you're currently on one hundred and sixty. How about one hundred and eighty? A twenty pound wage rise. There we go. He's happy with that. Done. If we keep our best coach here. Happy with that. We have a director of football, Igor Calso. Not too bad at judging player potential and ability. Good mentals again. Um, no, not really going to be any sort of thing there. Not worth bringing him in as our um, assistant manager, even though he's happy to be that. At the moment, it's Igor Callow. No staff, no scouts, no chief scout. Medical team. We have one head physio. Physiotherapy 12. Happy with that. We have two other physios in the club. Physiotherapy 15. You could be on for a promotion of head physio, my friend. Uh, who are you? Ante, Ante Kanazovic. We've got a goalkeeper called Ante Kanazovic. He's not 58, though, so they definitely are two different people. Um, and then the other physio, physio 13, adaptability 19. Very nice indeed. Darko Kolak is in there as well. Interesting. Okay, so that's the staff. We've gone through the players. We've gone through the staff. We've set up a tactic. Um, I just want to go through. So we do have, like, over a month until our next game. And let's see if we can just get a cheeky... Friendly in tomorrow. Um, smaller reputation teams. Foreign. Let's go for Papa because they've got a fun name. I don't have no idea where they're from. Um, we'll see if they accept it. Just so we can get in. We'll do it on key um, key highlights only. We'll fly through it. And there is a Papa accept it. Now where are Papa from? Overview. From Hungary. This is an issue. We have some players that are on full time contracts. If we go to the contract page. You can see here. We have, what, three people on full-time, then we have part-time, then we have youth and amateur players. The problem we have is we're a, we are a semi-professional team, which means a lot of our training is unavailable. These people have other jobs they have to do. That will be an issue. We need to become a professional club as soon as we possibly can. I don't know if that looks right. It's probably more handsome than me, that guy. I mean, I'll zoom in on him. And then I'll zoom in on me. Which one's more handsome? Let me know down below. Um, we'll go and meet the, the the press. I'll deal with this. We know what the press conferences are like in Football Manager. I'll deal with all of this and then we will be right back. Okay, so just before we get into the game against Papa, this is how we're lining up. In possession, we're going to go for short passing and try and play using the guest best players we have, which are in the middle of the park. So therefore, focusing through the middle. We're going a little bit shorter. We're going to keep the time post slightly higher um, and we're not going to do anything else at the moment. This formation will adapt and change through all the friendlies before we get going. In the transition, we're looking to regroup. We're going to drop back, try and win the ball, and then counter them as soon as we get it. And out of possession, we're dropping the defensive line a little bit further and the lower line of engagement. They're not going to be very good. We can let their defense have it and try long balls from the back, which is fine. We've only selected five sub substitutes from a possible 12. That's not a problem. Uh, Kanezovic, the goalkeeper, our oldest player, our statesman, our best player, will get the captain's armband. They're lining up in a 4-2-2-2. Two, two, two. Interesting. We're lining up in a 4-4-2. Four, four, Let's get this game underway and see what these players have to offer. A team of ours, it's pre or not, you've got to win matches like this. Um, this is your chance to impress me. Granic was well up for that. Show me why you should be in the team. Passionately, show me why you should be in the team. Passionately, show me why you should be in the team. That fired a few more of them up. We'll just get the assistant to the opposition instruction. So there, here it is. And we're playing... At our very, very famous stadium, once designed to be the largest stadium in Zagreb. That didn't last very long because Dynamo Zagreb performed and uh, just generally took over. So we're going to go back to what I play with on the other one. We're going to go to key highlights for this game. Replay events should be, yeah, they're all in there. Uh, notifications are fine. Match speed during highlights will put slightly faster. Between highlights will go for fast. Notifications can stay on. And we'll do all the zoom and stuff when we get into the game. So, 10 minutes in, nothing's happened. Oh, you'll notice as well, we've got now um, badges and kit faces for all proper players. As Bektasi hits a free kick just over the bar. Sellout crowd, as you can see. There's three or four people in the west stand, which uh, is the biggest. Actually, that stand over there is the biggest stand in Zagreb. There isn't a stand on this side at the Krasnazovic Stadium. I'm pretty sure I've got that wrong. Ball forward, a Josipovic intercepts up to Vinsky. Vinsky comes forward. Good little run here from Vinsky. Got a lot of space to run into. Looking forward. It's a great tackle from the Papa Man. But Bektasi gets his head to it. Into Tadic. Tadic ball over the top into Negovic. Shoots. Hits the post. And our player on the left wing just ran in the wrong direction. He's probably got terrible decision making. But yeah. 
Okay, um, we're having quite a lot of shots from target. So when we've got the ball, let's look to work it, if we can, into the box. I've never played a formation that has two pressing forwards in it. So we may look to change that because I think that's not really going to work. Obviously, this is going to be quite a long episode because we've gone through the whole team, the whole staff, and playing a game. So I'll probably shut up and only commentate when there's a highlight. But Bektasi puts this ball in towards the back post. Pamlich is there with a header. Saved on the line. Pamlich looks to put it back in. Granic with a header. He can't keep that one out. And we get our first goal in the save. It's Josip Granic, who was uh, actually fired up in the team talk when I told him that there's chances to, to get yourself a place in the position here. It was actually cleared out of the goalkeeper's hands by his own defender. Parmasevic puts it back in. Granic with a header. Goalkeeper could do better, but they're a terrible, terrible team. Josipovic over the free kick. Puts it up towards Vinsky into Taric. Taric holds on to the ball. Out to Parmasevic. They're not really pressing us that much. Parmasevic comes forward on the left-hand side. Ball in. Looking for Granic again. He's fouled. Surely it is. It's a foul, and I don't know who our penalty taker is. I'm pretty sure they're all awful. Who is going to step up and take it? It is Bektasi, our central midfielder, and the goalkeeper saves it. Shocking. Okay, into half time. We are dominating. Ten shots, five of them on target. One nil up. Um, it's been pretty easy. We have missed the penalty as well. We've had a few people really starting to struggle with fitness this early on. I know we're playing a very early preseason, but um, I'm going to leave them all on. We are going to bring... Well, I can't bring everybody off the bench because we've got three goalkeepers on there. But we just need to bring the outfielders on. They, as you can see, make quite a lot of subs at half time. Only leaving their sub goalkeeper on the bench. Because Nervich takes the goal kick up forward. Vinsky heads it on. But it's won by Papa. Hevzi Thorth comes forward, which is a great name. Goes back to Taplaska, looks forward. Silic with a good header. Granic looks to bring it down. His first touch was horrendous, but luckily no one was around him. Parmasevic comes forward, lacking in options, really. No one busting a gut to get in there. He fires across in. The goalkeeper spilt it. And Uregovic pounces and fires it in. So that's a goal for each striker, which isn't a bad thing in pre-season. Uregovic pouncing on the goalkeeper mistake. I mean, I think we're going to look to change this formation and maybe get a few more people attacking from it. It's Parmasevic puts a ball in. Goalkeeper should really claim that. Easy finish for Regovic, the number nine. But uh, yeah, 2-0. Ah, I was clever. I didn't put through four goalkeepers on the bench. We're going to make some subs. We're going to bring on uh, Tramatona is going to come on to replace Granic. And Tramatona is then going to come up into this wing, well, winger role. We're going to play Parmasevic in attacking midfield. And he is going to be an attacking midfielder on attack. I just want to get a few more people forwards. Um, and running with the ball. Um, is everyone not playing very well? Bektasi's not having a game, but he's got to stay on because we've got no one else to play there. And I think that's probably going to be about it. We're just going to make that one change. Yeah, let's just see how that works. I've got a lot of left midfielders, haven't I? Which could be a potential issue um, as we try and rotate all the left midfielders. So, Tramatona on for Granic in its 2-0. With an hour gone, we're going to bring on Zebic for um, the right winger, Vinsky, um, and just make that change as well. Remember that They've used all their substitutions, bringing on their sub-goalkeeper. Lots of people are starting to look exhausted, down into the 63-65% fitness regimes. As Condor takes a throw into Torth, headed away by Matejevic, Parmasevic picks it up again into Zebic. Zebic up to Rigovic. Rigovic holds the ball well, back to Taric. Taric out to Tramatona, the sub. Tramatana, I should say. Tramatana comes forward. What is that a shot? Is that a shot from range? That was horrendous. What the bloody hell was that about? Right, for the last, what's this, 25 minutes-ish, we're going to come off the custom tactic and we're going to go to a Gegenpress. I just want to see how it affects these guys' fitness. It's very early in preseason. No one's done any fitness training. They're part-timers. Let's go and see how it works with 15 minutes to go the only thing i do want to change is that when we're in possession i still want to work it into the box um pretty slowly because we're terrible at long range shots so i'd rather they try and pass it in i guess especially against a team like papa who are terrible well it's clear to say the gegen press had no impact on the game we have no highlights other than this one which is likely to be the end one as zebic gets the ball back to bektasi who missed his penalty and uh into Taric, that's probably going to be the end of the game it is we get a 2-0 win in our first friendly. We didn't even let them have a shot on target, which was absolutely wonderful. Uh, calmly, I'm just going to say I'm pleased because we need to build morale up with them. And I think we'll end the first episode there. We'll have a quick look at the dynamics. How do they feel? Uh, we've got an average support, so we've got a good reputation, even though we've got no reputation whatsoever. Dressing room atmosphere is good. Uh, many contrasting personalities. Interesting. Uh, match cohesion is abysmal because we've only just got together as a team. Lots of new signings um, and everything like that. So, 
we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Let me know what you think about this save. Are you excited? Leave a like. Let the YouTube algorithm do its thing with every time you leave a like. Thank you very much to all the Patreons that are just over there. They will all be in this game at one point or another. If you want to be in the game, just sign up to Patreon down below. Go and check out loads of the other YouTubers that are doing Football Manager 19 stuff. I'm very, very excited by this. You've just got to let me know if you think we should do this in the hardcore mode where we do not touch the scouting tab. We don't go and find players ourselves. We only rely on our pretty terrible scouting system, which is non-existent at the moment. We only have a director of football. Let me know. Thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. But for now, I'm out. Cheers.